Schindler wins it by a big margin. Schindler wins the derby. Johnny, the Irish Derby, it's a race you've won four times in the past. Can we maybe talk through th those four wins, starting with Sindar in 2000? Was there, was there pressure on you going into that? It was the Epsom Derby winner coming on there. It is, yeah. There's always pressure coming back to the Curra, especially if you have to win an Epsom. You know, you're the champion, you're on home turf. I really wanted the horse to do it. Um, we thought he'd come out with Epsom really, really well. And, you know, there was, there was a million dollar bonus that year if you did the, the Epsom Derby double so there was I remember the night before thinking about you know a big race and really you know really hoped that the horse would do it on home soil but thankfully at halfway it was a little bit yeah. it, I remember it, it wasn't going according to plan he came off the bridle early for some reason and I was scrubbing him along but as soon as he got on the straight and I gave him a couple of backhanders he stretched right away I think he won by 10 lengths he was a very very good winner he was a very very good horse and he was after having a tough campaign mm. up until then, you know what I mean, with the, you know, the trial, Epsom, and then on to the Curra. But uh, he stretched right away, and he was a very impressive winner on the day. But it was nice, it was nice to get the job done. And wearing the egg cans colours, obviously, Shargar, Sharastani, Kayazi, do you remember those winning the Irish Derby before that? I was just, uh, I just remember, the first race, the first flat race I ever me remember watching was Shargar winning the Epsom Derby. I was 11, my uncle brought me out to we were outside and he says, oh, come on in. It was a Wednesday. I remember it was a Wednesday. The Derby used to be on a Wednesday. And we came in and um, I remember these green colours streaking away down in Epsom, horse's tongue hanging out. And I remember seeing this young, you know, this young boy riding this yeah. brilliant horse. And that was the first flat race I ever seen. So not so many years later to be in those famous colours. Uh, to win the Epsom Derby and to come back and then to be, you know, to be the champion coming back to the Curra, very, very special, very special. And when I look back at it now, even more special. Yeah, exactly. The way the wheel turns around and plenty of Aga horses here as well. And a couple of years later, Alan Shaw was your next Irish Derby winner. The Aga Cans as well, but you didn't wear the, the, the green colours with the red epaulets. You were in the old Aga Can silks. Yeah, well, it, it was very, um, very sporting of His Highness to do that because Dalekani won the French Derby and Alam Shah was after running third in Epsom. Bit unlucky, you know, he was a bit unlucky. So we were in the second colours. So um, I remember it, it, the race, you know, I, I, I planned to follow Sumi on all the way because he was on a big favourite. Dalekani was the big favourite. And a couple of Aidan's pacemakers went a very strong gallop. And Sumi on kind of sat close enough to the pace. And I remember attacking him early, just before he even got a breeder into his, like, I just attacked him early. And, and in fairness to Alam Shah, he answered every call that day. Um, and he came out on top and I kind of felt like it was a home victory there's no way you know the French champion yeah. was coming over to beat the Irish horse in, in the Curra and the, the crowd it was a great reception I got that day the crowd was really it was really it, it felt like Ireland against France really you know and um, but he was good he was good on the day Alam Shar and he went on and a, after that race I think uh, his, his highness's team says Alam Shar can go to the King George and uh, Dalekani can go to the Ark. Mm. And Alam Shar won the King George and Dalekani went on and won the Ark. Yeah. So, you know, it, competition is always good. And the Irish Derby is probably lacking that now at the moment. We're lacking the French champion coming over, taking on maybe the English Derby winner and then a couple of the locals as well. But that's what's, it, it's missed a little bit at the moment. And um, But on that day, it did feel like a real... Ireland against France. The ride you gave Alam Shar as well, and as you said, Delacani was fairly far forward, just behind the pace. You must have got a great kick out of that, did you? I did, and Christophe Soumillon was kind of the, uh, uh, his highness's uh, jockey in France, and I was riding for him in Ireland, so, you know, this Super Soumillon was coming <laughs> over, so I couldn't wait to get upside Super Soumillon on that day, and this it all worked well in my favour, but um, yeah, it was it, like, in that kind of way, I just, just wanted to beat, <laughs> beat Sumi on. <laughs> <laughs> and then of course, fame and glory, I suppose, fame and glory was, was great. You didn't see the stars to contend with on the day. As yeah, it, it, was, it, it was, it was, it was, it uh, was, yeah, nice, nice to wake up that morning and say that the John Ox was after taking and see the stars out because the ground, but we, we really had a lot of faith in fame and glory that day. He was going really well at the time. Mile and a half of the curl was really going to suit him. Uh, it, 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 pretty straightforward. I kind of followed, followed the pace and took it up two down. And in all fairness to the horse, he stretched right away. He was a very, very good horse on his day. Stayed really well. Um, was hoping to see the stars was going to run because the ground was on the on the slow side mm. of good and maybe that would have slowed him up a little bit. But uh, 
kind of glad when you look back at it now that he wasn't <laughs> I suppose he was just unlucky wasn't he to be born in the same year and see the stars he was he was yeah he was and there's a few Ballydoyle horses a bit unlucky that year to be born to say because we we had some great horses that year you know like fame and glory master craftsman rip van winkle mm. uh we had some really top horses down there and we just just born in the wrong year yeah but he, he got his irish derby win on the he board. did no he won yeah. the irish derby fair and square and as i said on the day you know on the day he was he was very very good yeah and then Kate Blanco was your fourth I, I, I suppose Aidan O'Brien had a good few runners in that race was it difficult it was yeah, it yeah was it was very difficult you know um I rode all the horses on the Tuesday before before the race and they all worked in sep separately with their lead horses and um like I was I was very undecided what horse I I, I was going to ride and I rang Aidan just before declarations and he goes no you ride Kate Blanco and I, I went back and watched the videos again and watched the comments again and I rang Aidan, are you sure? <laughs> are you sure? Are you sure, Aidan? He said, if you want to win the Irish Derby, you like Cape Blanco. So, listen, I came and I beat. I, 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 I'm not sure what was second there, Colin O'Donnell. Yeah, Midas Touch, I think Midas was second. Midas Touch yeah, was yeah. second, he just got up and beat my neck. Um, it, was, it was a great race, it was, you know, very, very competitive. Um, and he was a solid horse, he was, a, he was after winning the Dante. He probably wasn't the easiest horse to train and keep sound, but you know, to win another Irish Derby on home soil, it was you know, it, it's 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 a huge weekend, mm -hmm. it's a huge race, and I was glad in the right O'Brien pointed me in the right <laughs> direction. Watch live racing now on RacingTV.com.